Hi there, my name is Ian Spence from Mac Touch Plus, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Aperture and how you can utilize some of its powerful features. Aperture is a complete photography toolkit from Apple that lets you import, organize, edit, and share your photos from one easy to use application. It costs $80 and is available from the Mac App Store. Now, let's get started. If you're upgrading to Aperture from iPhoto, you'll notice right away that the user interface is actually quite similar. At the top of the application, there is the toolbar. Here you have access to some of the most important features of Aperture. For example, the Inspector window, the Importing dialog, the New menu, the Name tool, the Keywords tool, and the Sharing tool. On the right hand side of the toolbar you have the Browsing mode control. From here you can select Grid, Timeline, Full Screen, Faces, and Places. You also have access to a loop. On the left hand side of the application you have the Inspector window. Here you have the Library tab, the Info tab, and the Adjustments tab. Under the Library tab, you have your projects. Here you can sort all of your photos into events. Under the Photos tab, you have access to all of your pictures in your library. The Faces tab automatically organizes your photos based off of the faces within them. Aperture will automatically look for similar faces using a complex algorithm and add them to a queue for you to confirm or deny. The Places tab shows all of your photos on a map. If your camera has a built-in GPS, Photos are automatically geotagged, and when you load them into Aperture, they will show up at the location they were taking. You can also set a location for photos that weren't automatically geotagged. Alright, now that we got the basics of the user interface down, let's get started with importing pictures. Aperture comes with a photo importing tool that is just like the image capture application built into your Mac. To get started, plug in your camera or insert its memory card into your computer. Then click the Import button in the toolbar. The Import tool will open and show all the pictures that you took. From here, you can quickly uncheck and check all pictures to make sorting easier. You can also change the view mode between List, Full Screen, and Grid. On the right, you have some importing settings. I'm going to import all of these pictures into a new project called FlashMob and append the copyright information with my copyright tag. If you take your pictures in RAW format, you can change the settings for how Aperture deals with the RAW files here. Depending on how many pictures you are importing, it may take a bit for all the pictures to load. Once done, you have the choice to keep the items on your memory card or delete them. I'll choose to delete the pictures and eject my memory card. If you don't have any pictures to import, you can always use PhotoStream from Apple's iCloud update. Just select the Photo Stream tab on the sidebar and choose Turn on Photo Stream. If asked, sign in with your Apple ID. If you want, you can change the Photo Stream settings in Aperture's Preferences under the Photo Stream tab. Once all the pictures have been downloaded, you can import them into your library. Select the pictures you wish to import and drag and drop them onto your library. This will import them into Aperture. Now that we've imported our pictures, we can go ahead and separate the ones that we want to keep from the ones we don't. To do this, we are going to be using flags. Start by opening a picture in full screen by double clicking its thumbnail. Using the arrow keys to navigate, hit the slash key to flag the picture. Hit it again to unflag it. Once you've flagged all the pictures you want to keep, we need to edit them. Start by using the search box to only show flagged pictures. Hit the magnifying glass drop down menu and choose flagged. This will hide all pictures besides the ones that have been flagged. To return, click the clear button on the search box. To edit photos, open them in full screen and go to the adjustments tab on the inspector window. The adjustments tab has a lot of powerful adjustment tools that rival those in Photoshop. You can add even more adjustments from the add adjustment drop down menu. I'm going to add a levels adjustment to this image just to bring up the contrast a bit. To do this, enable the Levels tool by checking the checkbox beside its name, and then apply your Levels adjustment. If you want to crop your images, you can do that by using the Crop tool on the bottom toolbar. Select the Crop tool, choose an aspect ratio if you wish, and then draw your crop. Press Enter on your keyboard or click Apply to save your crop. You can edit your crop even after you've applied it by going back into the crop tool. 
To straighten your image, choose the straightening tool from the bottom toolbar and click and rotate your image to straighten it. If you ever want to delete an adjustment after you've applied it, you can disable it by unchecking the checkbox beside its name or remove it completely by clicking the cog and choosing Remove this adjustment. If you need to touch up some problem areas on a person's skin, you can do this by using the Retouch tool. Select the Brush menu and click Retouch. Then, just simply brush your problems away. If any subjects on your photo have red eye, you can quickly solve that by using the Red Eye Removal tool on the bottom toolbar. Simply select the Red Eye Removal tool and brush away red eyes. If you need to revert the image back to the original, click the Revert to Original button. Earlier, I was talking about how you can geotag your pictures to show them on a map. You can do this from the Info tab by clicking the Show Map button. Type in a location into the search box and choose the nearest result. Then, zoom in and drag the pin to the correct location if you need to. Click the check mark to apply the change. To apply locations to multiple images at once, switch to the Places view and move the map to the correct location. Then, select all the pictures in the film strip and drag and drop them onto the map. Click Done to apply the changes. Faces are a wonderful way to organize photos by using the people within them. Once tagged, Aperture will look for similar photos for you to confirm or deny. After you've tagged plenty of pictures, Aperture will become pretty accurate with its suggestions. However, nothing is perfect, and sometimes you will get incorrect results. I'm going to be tagging my friend Christine from my graduation photos, because the people in the Flash Mob album I don't actually know. To get started, I'm going to go to my graduation project and open up a picture with my friend in it. From there, I'll select the Names tool, select the face, and fill in the name of that face. Click Done to save your changes. If Aperture missed a face, you can draw it a selection by clicking the Add Missing Face button and selecting a missing face. Add a name to the new box and click Done to save your changes. Once you've added enough faces, you can go to the Faces tab and start confirming some suggestions. Open up the Faces tab and double click on the person you just tagged. From there, choose Confirm Faces at the bottom. Here you can quickly confirm and or deny faces. To confirm an image, select it, or select multiple images. To deny an image, hold down the Alt key and click it, or select multiple images while holding down the Alt key. If an image isn't a face at all, right-click it and choose Not a Face. When you're done, click the Update button to save your changes. Like I said earlier, Aperture isn't 100% accurate and will sometimes give you an incorrect result. If you need to remove an incorrect tag, double-click the photo to make it full screen and select the Name tool. From there, hit the X bubble to clear the tag. Okay, so we have now imported, organized, and edited our photos. It's time to share them with friends. I'm going to share these photos on Flickr, a popular photo sharing site. Notice that on each picture we've edited, there's a small little pictograph in the bottom right. This is an indicator Aperture uses to tell us that the photo has been adjusted. Before we get started, we need to sign into Flickr to let Aperture use our account. Go to Aperture's Preferences and choose the Web tab. From there, click the plus button and choose Flickr. Click the Setup button on this window. Your web browser will load Flickr's sign-in page, where you will need to log into your Flickr account. Once you've logged in, authorize Aperture and close the web browser. Aperture will automatically start downloading the photos you have online in your sets. Now go back into the project we just created and select the photos you want to share. Choose Flickr from the sharing menu. Aperture will create a new set on Flickr with your project's name and resizes the images for you. If you don't have a Flickr Pro account, Aperture will automatically downsize the images to save on your bandwidth. 
click Publish to upload these photos. Depending on how large the photos are and how many you're uploading, it can take quite a while for them to share. Once done, you can load up your Flickr page and see all the photos you just uploaded. If you need to access your photos outside of Aperture, you can export them from the Export dialog. Select the images you want to export, right-click them, and select Export. Versions will export the current image, including edits. Originals will export the unedited image straight from the camera. Metadata will export the extra data about the image, like the location and camera information. I rarely use this. From here, it's a pretty straightforward process. However, Aperture has some pretty neat features that can make exporting a lot better. For example, you could have Aperture save the pictures with a different size and in a different file format. You can also have Aperture store the pictures in a subfolder with the name of your choice. And finally, you can have Aperture automatically name your files. You can customize any of these presets by going into the edit window. If you want Adobe Photoshop, you can add a shortcut to the context menu when right-clicking a photo in Aperture. Open Aperture's preferences and choose the Export tab. Choose an external photo editor and select Adobe Photoshop. Now when you right-click a photo, you can choose to open it up in Photoshop. However, with all the great features that Aperture has, you won't really need to. Now that we've shared our pictures with our friends, let's take a look at some of the other ways we can interact with our pictures once we've finished editing them. Aperture allows you to create high-quality photo books right from the application. To do this, select the pictures you want to include in your photo book and choose New Book from under the New menu. Set a name, size, and theme for the book and click Choose Theme. To add pictures to the book, just drag and drop photos from the film strip onto the boxes to have them filled. To edit the text boxes, just click in them and type whatever you please. When you've filled in at least 20 pages of the book, you can have it printed or you can buy the book. If you own a website, you can create an online photo gallery with the photos you took from within Aperture. To do this, select the photos you wish to include in the site and select Web Page from under the New menu. Give your site a name. Choose a theme, and click Choose Theme. A preview of your site will load up in Aperture. From here, you can simply click on a text box to change its contents. If you want to rearrange photos, just grab a picture and move it to the location of your choice. If you want, you can adjust the number of columns and rows on your site by changing the values at the bottom of the preview. When you are done, select Export Web Page to save your site. Then, load up your site in your internet browser, and you can see the site created by Aperture. You can also create high-quality slideshows of your photos to upload to YouTube or to play back on a TV. This process is very similar to the last two. Select your photos and choose Slideshow from under the New menu. Give your slideshow a name, pick a theme, then click Choose Theme. A preview of your slideshow will open up into Aperture. From here, you can mouse over each frame to see how it will transition. To add music, click the Music button and drop a song from your iTunes library onto the timeline to add it. You can rearrange photos by choosing an arrangement option from the sorting menu. When you are done, click the export button. Then choose an appropriate quality from the quality drop-down menu. Higher resolutions will produce a larger file size and vice versa. Time Machine is a wonderful way to keep your Mac safely backed up. However, Aperture doesn't play too nice with Time Machine, and I suggest you change the backup interval to every 3 hours rather than every hour. To do this, stop any backups that are in progress, and eject and unplug your backup disk. 
Then open Activity Monitor and disable the Backup UPD process. We have to shut down this process so that we can safely edit the settings it uses. Open Terminal and enter the following command. The command will be available in the write-up below. Enter your password when prompted. If no message is returned, the command completed successfully. Restart your computer and the new settings will have been applied. And that's it for the basics of Aperture. In this video, we covered the user interface, importing photos, flagging pictures, geotagging pictures, naming the people within the pictures, sharing them with friends, and creating books and websites with the pictures. But there is so much more that you can do. It truly is a wonderful application and a photographer's best friend. I highly recommend that you go to the Apple App Store and buy it right now. I'm Ian Spence, and thank you for watching.